Hello and welcome back to part 2 of our cover based system series. This series was voted for by my patrons so big thank you to all my patrons for voting for this little mini series. And now in part 1 we set up the characters to be able to do a wall trace and snap themselves into cover. In this episode we're going to work on the target of making our character not only just move and follow along the axis of the wall itself but also lock it so they can't leave the cover if the cover ends. So let's get jumping straight in and get started. So we're going to first of all go back into our character class. Now in our character class we're using the wall trace method to indicate when we should be attaching to a wall. However once we are attached to that wall we need to keep track of the normal of that uh, wall that we're on. So if the shape changes we need to be able to adapt and change the uh, rotation of the character and their movement to wrap around it. So if we want to do round objects, we can do round objects. So how do we do this? Now this is also going to uh, do another function, which is the locking of the player to behind the cover. So you can't walk out into the open. And this is all handled on the move mode here. So let's go to the event graph. And it's all going to take place on this move right here. We're not worried about move forwards because we're not handling movement on the forwards plane. We're only doing side to side whilst we are in cover. So first thing we do is determine whether or not we're in cover. We're going to drag our is in cover variable and put that into a branch. And plug that in like so. And if it is false, we're going to go to the add movement input that is currently there for us. However, if it's true, we're going to create a new function to handle that input. So we're going to create a new function and we're going to call it cover trace. That's it's going to have two functions. One is going to lock the player behind the, uh, behind the cover. And secondly, it's going to make the character wrap and change their normal on the fly. So as the shape changes, their direction changes too. So the first thing we need to do is create a sequence because we have to do two traces out from the player. So the first thing is going to be a line trace by a channel. And in there it's a bit more complex because we're not going directly from the character's center point, we're going out from their sides. We're going to do two line traces, one from either side of the character. So what we're going to do is first of all get their location. We need to know where they are in the world first of all. We then have to create an offset for this. Now the offset is going to go to either side. So it's going to handle, first of all, the uh, left hand side. Okay. Um, oh, sorry, the right hand side. Sorry, this will be the right hand side. So this will be um, getting the character movement, first of all, and getting where they are constrained at the moment. So we can get the plane constraint normal that we set up in the last episode, like so. And we can then multiply this by minus one now the reason why we multiply this by minus one is because these this plane constraint normal at the moment is a, the normal the direction away from the wall we want the direction towards the wall so that's going to get that going towards the wall like so we then want to make a rot from that so we're going to take that vector direction and use the make rot function to turn that direction into a rotation. With that rotation in mind, we can now use it to get the right vector. So this is basically going to allow us to get whatever direction we are facing the wall, it will get the immediate right direction to it. So we'll make get right vector. So we now know the direction that we want to go to on the right. This direction is only a direction element. We then want to multiply it by a distance. Now this is going to be uh, on the edge of the capsule. And you can see here the capsule, when I click on it, it's got a capsule radius of 45. So I'm going to change this value here to 45. And that should position our line to start at the edge of the capsule. We're going to add that to our actor location by adding the two vectors together. And that will be our starting point for our line trace. Now the end trace is going to be very similar. It's going to take from this uh, minus one value first of all, and we're going to multiply that by a float. And this is the length of the line. So we're going to do 200 in here. 
So it goes a fair distance. And then we're going to add this value to our starting point. So drag out the starting point, do add vector. Ooh, wrong one. Add vector and plug that in to the bottom there. So whenever you're doing a straight line, you typically want to add it to the starting point. Once you've got a length, this is just getting us our length and direction. And then adding it to the start like so. And like we've done before, we're going to change the trace channel here from visibility to cover. Okay, so once we've done that, we need to store whether or not we actually hit something, uh, which is quite important when working out whether or not you can actually move to the left or to the right. So I'm going to take the return value from here and promote that to a variable. And in this case, a local variable. Local variables are variables that don't exist in the whole entire actor, that only exist in the function they're created. So this one we're going to call write hit. It allow, it's very good practice because it allows you to keep track of uh, information without having to drag lines everywhere and other things like that. It allows you to keep track of that information whilst you're working on it. Sort of like, um, like a scrap piece of paper while you're doing working out of your math sums. Now we've got the right hit, we now need to get the left hit. And it's going to be pretty much the same as you see here with one minor change. So I'm going to copy all of this and paste that down underneath that. And we can connect that up to our sequence here. So, so the main change here is back at the start because we need now to go to the left of the character, not to the right. But the only thing we need to do is change the make rot from X and not make it come from the minus one. Instead, we're going to get that value from the plane constraint normal. Now, because we are basically flipping the normal around, that means the right vector is going to change because the relative direction has changed as well. To demonstrate that, if we go back to the viewport, this is the top one we just done, the first one. It gets the right hit. And what we're doing there is flipping the normal of the wall, which is which way we're facing currently, and using the right hand vector of the direction of that uh that direction. Meaning we get the point here on the edge of the screen of the edge of the character to the right. If we don't flip that wall normal first, it basically will be facing this way. Now to the right of this is going to be actually to the left of the character. So therefore we get the correct placement. Now the reason why we're using the constraint normal rather than the character's normal is because remember the character will be turning around as they move. But their forward vector won't be actually forward to the camera. So you want it to be relative to the wall that they're attached to. So let's go back to our cover here. And we are going to go and make sure that that is done there. The rest of it is going to stay the same, so you still want the minus one for the direction of the, the line trace because it's still going to go towards the wall. That's totally okay. And numbers are going to be the same as well. Now the other difference is that we don't want it to be the right hit anymore. Instead, we want the left hit. So drag return value out, promote to local variable, and set to left hit. Like so. Now we know whether or not we hit left or right. Now for this, we're going to drag out a then another then on the sequence and put that into a branch. So the following is only going to happen if they're both true. So we can move freely basically. We're going to drag these both out and we're going to check these for an AND node. That means both of these have to be true in order for the branch to evaluate as true. Now on here we're going to then do a simple check to see whether or not the character is moving. We're going to right click here and get move right and because this is happening on the move right function we'll be using this function here to read the value from the input this returns a value between minus one and one with zero meaning the player isn't pushing anything so let's use this and check to see that the player is actually using their key, uh, key presses we're going to check this against it being not equal to zero and put that into a branch after your first branch there Okay, so the following will only happen if we are in fact moving. And if we are moving, we want to basically do what we've done in the wall trace again, but this time in the direction that we're currently facing. So we're going to do a, another line trace here on the true by channel. So the starting point is going to be the actor location. And we'll plug that into the start there. And the end location is going to be the actor's location plus the direction we want to go to. So plus vector 
put that into the end. Now, the new direction vector we're going to get from here is going to come from the constraint that we currently have. So, like we've done before, I'm going to drag out the character movement. Get plane constraint normal. And then from there, I want to get the opposite of that. So that's currently going away from wall. This multiplied by minus one will get us going towards the wall, which is what we want. We then want to multiply that by distance. I'm going to multiply that by 200. And then we're going to plug that into our new in there. Okay, so now we need to change the trace channel to cover. And after that's done, we're going to do a test to see whether or not we actually hit it. So do a condition for the return value. And if it's true, we're going to break the out hit. We'll now need to reset the normal to a new normal. So drag out the character movement again. Set plane constraint normal to the normal that you get from the break hit result. Plug that into true. So that will set us up with the new direction that we are going to be telling the player to follow the cover. So as the cover turns around, they should follow and track that with it. We now want to be able to scale the movement based on whether or not those inputs have been hit. So if these line traces are hit or not, that will determine whether or not they can move in that direction. So for this, we need to know what is the scale value coming into our scene here. Now for this, we can put in a parameter and get it from our event graph, or we can just use the get move right thing again. That will get us the current value that we've been inputted. So. After we've done the set plane constraint normal, remember this is if we can still move, okay? Because at the moment our event graph, the add movement input is on this branch. We need to make one on this branch instead, the true branch. So on the cover trace, we're going to do add movement input. And this will move like normal. So that will be the scale value. And the world direction will actually be the rotation of the uh, control get control rotation and we're going to split this and get the yaw and we're going to uh sorry make rotator first make rotator and plug that yaw into it there And this will get the right vector. So get right vector. And plug that into the world direction there. So it will go to the right of whichever way the camera is facing. Okay, so once we've done that, we're going to go back out and go back to the start here of this first branch where we're checking whether or not right hit and left hit were true. Now, because this is happening at the moment at the moment when they are like normal. We now want to test whether or not they're not normal. So when right hit or left hit are not true, how do we handle that? So I'm going to drag the false down and do a little reroute node and put this in to a, another add movement input. However, the scale is going to be very different. So let's just move this along the end here and line it up with this one. We can use the same world direction and all that movement okay so as I said the scale value is going to be very different based on whether or not the left hit is true or right hit is true or if neither of them are true so what we're going to do first of all is determine which one we want to use the left hit or the right hit so we're going to do a select node and you want the one with the yellow arrows and we're going to drag in our left hit and right hit. We need to be local variables, remember? So right hit is here, left hit is here. The condition for the select, the index, is going to be from the get move right. And this is going to determine which way we're currently going. So we're going to do a sign on this. We know if we're going left or right, or not moving at all. 
the sign will turn uh, look at the positive and negative value if it's positive it'd be one if negative minus one if it's neither it'd be zero so i'm going to check if this is equal to uh one so if we're going to the right basically and that'll be as i said the index Drag that in there and if it's true we want it to be doing the right hit because we're checking to the right so true will be in there otherwise it'd be left Okay, so that's the first thing. We now know which which one we want to use. Okay. <coughs> now knowing that we know which one to use to do the check, left or right, we're now going to get move right again to know which way we're currently moving the character. So again, we're going to sign this. And we're going to check to see if this is equal to zero. Well, not equal to zero, sorry, rather. Not equal to zero. So it's only going to do it if we are actually trying to move. So we're going to check if this is true. So we actually aren't moving at all. And that we currently have this set to true as well. So this is basically saying uh, if we are moving to the le uh, left or right and our result from that direction is also correct as well, that means we can move. So we're going to do a select float and the true float for this. So if we can move, we want to use the get move right. And if it's false or B, we're going to leave it as zero. So it doesn't actually move. So now we can plug this into our scale. Let's just move this all along. I'll re-explain it as well in case you're confused by it the scale value there okay so scale value is how much it's going to move in that direction in most cases we look at minus one or one zero is if we're not moving at all so we need to know which one we want to look at we've got two line traces we need to know which one we need to check in order to check if we can actually move in that direction so this will determine whether or not we want the right hit or left hit so we're just finding out which way we're going so if we're going to the right we're going to use the right hit if we're going to the left we can use the left hit that will come out here and do a check. It's also going to check whether or not we are actually moving. So if we're not moving at all, it's not going to do anything and we'll set the value to uh, zero, which is what we want to not move. But if we are moving, this will be true. And this will be uh, true or false based on whether or not these actually are hitable. If they don't hit anything, then this is going to output false. Therefore, the and will also fail and become false, choosing B. If they are both true, so we do have a hit here and we do have movement, then we're going to tell it to move. Okay, so that's all that there, and I think we're good to go. Let's go back to our event graph and chuck this onto here. Drag your cover trace out, plug that into true, and hit compile. So we're going to go back to our game, hit play, and let's go test this out. So if I go up to this wall here, and then move to the left and to the right, we can't move past the cover point. This is exactly what we want. It's perfect. Great. Excellent. And uh, that will do it. So there's only one last thing we may want to do to improve upon this slightly. And that is to make it so that when we let go of the key, he goes back to facing the wall. Uh, if you want to do that, we can show you how to do that quickly. We're going to go back to our cover trace here. We're going to make sure we are actually set to not moving. We're going to your cover trace. And, um, oh, sorry, not here. Sorry, back to our event graph. So get the move right. And we're going to check to see if that's equal to zero. So when we're not pushing the key at all, we can do this thing and put this into a branch. We then want to take the add movement input again. But this time we want it to go in the direction of forwards. Now, because we are constraining the normal, this actually isn't going to move anything. So we want to go and get the character movement. Get plain constraint normal. And multiply that by minus one. We get the direction towards the wall. And that will go into the wall direction and scale value we're going to leave as one 
So when we're not pushing a key, he's going to effectively try and walk forwards. But because he can't, he's not actually going to move anywhere. But the beauty of this is because we're in cover, we're not using the control of the desired rotation yaw. Instead, our character movement is handling rotation with orient rotation to movement. So if you don't have this ticked, make sure you've got this ticked. Because the movement direction is coming from this. So it's going to be like, I'm going to try and move forwards, therefore I want this to be true. So if I go and test this out, when I don't push a key, he should go back to facing the wall. So here he is. You can see how he turns to the wall. Which should be good later on when we do shooting and aiming above cover. Because then he's facing the correct way for shooting. And there you have it. So the test that it can actually move around something. I'm going to show you this. I'm going to put it in a cylinder. And I'm going to make this a bit bigger obviously. Because this is way too small. And I'm going to change this to use the cover trace. So I'm going to go down to the collision settings. And change the preset here from default to custom. And tell cover to be block. Now when I push play and go up to this thing. And cover behind it. As I move, I'm just, I'm just holding down D. You can see how he rotates around the wall because it's constantly updating his position on that plane constraint. E again, to leave the cover. Thanks very much for watching. This was part two. If you want to watch in part three, the final part, you can have the patreon.com forward slash Ryan Lady. We can watch that last part plus all my videos before everyone else by simply just becoming a patron member. Join me in the last part where I'll be going through how to make it so when you aim the gun, he'll stand up above this cover and then dip back down when you release the aim button. So join us in the next episode right now and I'll see you all then. Bye everyone.